assalamu alaikum good morning khush amdi ji aaya nu khuy morkh wa khair agle ni ha tu de shum me wash wale oh hi gunzaimans guten morgen hola bon your previous kaifa hal hal shama chatore ahlan wa sahlan marhaba buna and a very amazing good morning to everybody who's tuned in to ptv world and are watching world this morning alongside the very amazing the very talented Shiza Hashmi and Shiza Khan. Hello, Shiza. How are you today? I am doing great, and I'm not going to ask you how you're doing <laughs> because I know for a fact Thank you need that question. But, ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday, and we have sort of just started the week, and uh, it's a great weather outside, I have to say. But before, why are you laughing? <laughs> exactly. Okay. You, you know <laughs> well, what? It's good to laugh in the morning, so yeah. I'm going to let you. Yeah, but but you know what happens is that you know when when you are in like in, in a rhythm and you're in a flow and you've been doing it for like longer period of time. <laughs> So all of a sudden, when you change things, you know you can feel that know, that you know, know okay, you know there's something different today. So how, so how are, are you? you today? <laughs> I am great, and how are you? I'm absolutely perfect. I think that the weather outside is great too, as well. Islamabad, ladies and gentlemen, as they say, is the second best capital uh, in the world. So and it looks great. You know, it's fresh after rainy. uh night but other than but that was it all good last night is what yeah this is something which we'll definitely talk about but i think first things first top stories coming up let's see what's happening all around the globe and inside pakistan let's, let's do it look. good morning prime minister imran khan inaugurates a country wide cleanliness drive titled clean and green pakistan i'm so i think everybody needs to you know play their role absolutely in keeping your country clean not just your houses for your cars they throw everything out of the cars <laughs> Pakistan bowled out for 482 runs in their first innings against Australia on the second day of the first test in Dubai PTV Sports is telecasting the match live but I certainly have a few friends who are very interested and very keen to watch test match matches matches all day long so if it's and Islamabad and adjoining areas received rain thunder showers making the weather pleasant ever since yesterday I guess So did you enjoy the weather? Yeah, well, I really didn't enjoy it because of the fact that it was very harsh and was raining cats yeah. and dogs and then after every now and then you could hear that you know as if Thunder yeah as if you know that the lighting's being struck Absolutely, onto some yes. other places too as well. And this is why that we have actually gathered a public service message for all those people mm-hmm. who are out there who might not even be aware of the fact that you know if God forbid you know lightning hits your house or anything else what to do next i didn't know until just so so me. yesterday i you know while i was on my way i read it in the newspaper as well that iesco's 20 electricity feeders tripped because mm. of the fact yes. that lightning struck and we could feel it over here in islamabad as well because there was no electricity right, but ladies and right. gentlemen what will you do if god forbid unfortunately lightning hits your house now i think the first thing which you need to realize is that if it hits your house you first of all you have to go onto the roof you have to check the chimney because it definitely damages the cement and the blocks mm. too as well and other than that all the electricity is going to go because of the fact that the lightning is actually going to travel from Through the cables. you know from the electricity cables and the plumbing pipes and all of these things yes. and other than that there will be sockets which will be burnt then you know for example if you had adapters inside the sockets mm. you know they're burnt probably too as well so please make sure that you do not turn the breaker on you have to call a professional to your house and only then let him do that stay away from all the wires from all the sockets make sure that you're wearing shoes make sure that you're not wearing you know bare feet as well and other than that please wash your dishes yeah. once again i don't know why but this this is something this was some information which i had to go through okay. so this is why i'm telling you and please make sure that you do not touch anything metallic or hmm. which conducts hmm. electricity yes. make make sure that everybody's safe make sure that you guys are wearing your shoes this hmm. is very important because it's not a joke and Absolutely. the the first part of it is very horrendous and horrible that god forbid if light, lightning is going to hit your house there will be a massive explosion and you might not know what just happened so just true. stay calm be cool and call a professional for help but that's true because we just want all of you to be safe out there while you enjoy the weather so uh, should we move on to what we're talking yeah, about yeah let's today? do that okay so a few months back probably a few weeks back we had a show about child care coaching and early childhood development and we received quite a lot of feedback on yeah. that a lot of young mothers were contacting us and you know uh, giving us feedback and questions about this is what you should have asked and this is what we need to know which is why ladies and gentlemen today we have sort of created the same show 
but there's a with a li little difference. Last time they were all four of them were coaches, right? And yeah. they were telling sort of one part of the story. But this time there's going to be sort of one on one discussion between young mothers and the coaches. We have a childcare coach and we have a master life coach as well. While the young mothers who also happen to work while they are parenting are going to pose their questions and uh, the issues that they're facing and their arguments as well. And so other than that, you know, ladies and gentlemen, side by side. So what's going to happen is that I'm actually going to be on the other side of the picture. Yes where you know I, I think it's it since it's the you know we are, we are in 2018 mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's the era of technology and research and ignorance at the same time yes. so there were kids before us too as well there were mm -hmm. mothers before us they used to work too and there was no concept of child care coaching mm -hmm. or probably having a life coach with you as well to teach you how to actually go about things in and life or how to do good in your yeah. relationships. So, so that does not really mean that I'm not telling you that it is not important. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I w we want to build an argument where yeah. we actually come up with things or a decision unanimously mm -hmm. that this is something we all need to do. Mm -hmm. Why? This is something which we'll be asking our guests. So, yeah, before we move on to uh, introduce our guests, I know we should shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, Shazad, you're a parent as well. And I think last time I started the discussion with yeah. the sort of similar thing. So last time you mentioned that you don't even like your kid going out with your servants to buy yeah. ice cream, right? Yeah. Well, that's okay. And that's totally your opinion. But would you allow a stranger to look after your child in the early childhood? I mean, in terms of childcare centers, let alone go out to buy ice cream. Okay, that, that's, that's a very important question. And a lot of times, you know, this is something which people do not figure out. That, for example, even if we, when we used to go to school, when it was nursery, Montessori, till the fifth grade as well. So what used to happen was that you'll always find a female teacher teaching the kids. Hmm. You know, you will never find a male guy. Right. Other than that, even, Very when, rarely so. yeah, even when you go to daycare centers, you know, you'll always see ladies. But at the same time, I think, I know that I was very young as well, but I think that, you know, all those women who are teaching should be held accountable for their actions too. Okay. It's not just the men. I think we're talking about an inclusive society. Mm -hmm. Anybody's mind can be crazy. And, you know, so it's better to be safe than, than to probably repent. So that's, that's, that's what, what I think and I believe in taking preventative measures. Okay, that's your opinion and yes. I totally agree. Thank you I, very I much for that. I can't say I agree with it, but I <laughs> respect it. So on my right hand side, okay, so what is your opinion? Let's see. I wouldn't know because I'm not a parent here. Okay. I think the feeling is totally so how different. So how I do you feel about your niece? You know, we can, we can talk okay, about so, that. Okay, uh, so yeah, ever since I had her, I've, because Tabir and I, my sister have been very close ever since, we, we're just 11 months apart. Wow. So we've been, yes, okay. we've been very close ever Big since we were born. applause for Uncle Aunty. Thank you very much. <laughs> so ever since Amal, my niece was born, I felt like I need to give all of my world to her. I don't want her to go through any troubles. I don't ever want to, you know, her to wake up one day in the morning and feel like, oh, this is what I want. This is what I should have done. I don't want any sad well, thing in her life. Your sister's about to cry. Don't do that. <laughs> 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 all right, on my right hand side, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by a childcare coach. She's none other than Ms. Shafia Rafiq. Hello, assalamu alaikum. How are you? Our regular. <laughs> <laughs> Wa alaikum assalam. I'm fine. How are you, Shazam? Absolutely perfect. Thank you very much for joining us. And alongside Ms. Shafia, we have been joined by Thamaya, who is a blogger. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? I'm good. Loving the energy on this show already. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank we you very much for saying that. Alongside Samaya. Now, this gentleman, ladies and gentlemen, actually, uh, when he came in and while I was going through his profile, I was surprised to know that the, uh, that the introduction I'm going to <laughs> give you guys, because he's a master relationship coach and he's none other than... Mr. Gohar Ahmed Sharif. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm very well. Alhamdulillah. Thank, Thank you very much for joining us. And before I move on to our last guest, uh, who is a master relationship go? Uh, in fact, coach. Basically, the problem is that when two people meet, yeah. right? Whatever the context, even in husband and wife, as friends, men and women are wired differently. They have different circuit over here. So they behave in a different manner. And then on top of it, what comes is the early childhood, which is zero to seven years, okay. which is the imprint age. What happens during the imprint age is what we see, what we hear, what we are told, what we go through, whether in the house, in the street, in the school, it becomes impressioned. So that's why zero to seven years is the impression age. Then becomes the seven to 14, which is the now, that's something that's something which we will discuss but who is a master relationship coach like uh, what is uh, your role okay the person is who uh, on whom people go for solution to their problems hmm. 
uh, be it marital problem or early relationship problems or is parenting issues, anything which is related to relationships. And so can it be mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws? Oh, yes, yes. Did it ever, have you experienced it? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. A big round of applause to, <laughs> to, to those mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws too as well. You guys are having relationship goals, hashtag relationship goal. Last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, we've been joined by somebody who's a writer, who's a makeup artist. And I think that she's very brave that she came up with the idea that I actually wanted to talk about postpartum depression too as well. She's a mother and she's none other than Ms. Tabir Hashmi. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Welcome, Sam. Alhamdulillah. I'm great. How are Thank you? Thank you very much for joining us. It's great what that you're out here What is your name, Tabir well. Hashmi? Sorry? Is your name Tabir Hashmi? Yes, okay. it is. I think it changed a few years <laughs> ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's, no, it wasn't mentioned. So, oh, 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 okay. So I just figured it out. So... Shiza Hashmi and Tabir Hashmi. Wow! So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put a round of applause for Shiza's sister in the studio. Let's get the conversation started. I okay. think Shiza, I'll let you do that. Okay, but so, uh, Ms. Shafi, I want to start with you. Please. Sort of an overview of what childcare coaching actually is and when did it start? I mean, I don't remember my mother or my, let's say, dadi or nani ever telling me, you know what, we went to childcare centers. Uh, let's start with uh, the question you said, uh, what is actually a childcare coaching? Hmm. There are two aspects of childcare coaching. Mm -hmm. One is uh, parental coaching, which means we guide parents through their child, uh, their behavior management, and then foods and nutrition pro uh, prosperous, mm -hmm. and whatever the related question towards child. Mm -hmm. Another aspect of childcare coaching is that the childcare centers, mm -hmm. we provide business management solutions also. We okay. tell them how to manage daycare center, how to manage child care center, okay. Okay. and what actually the purpose is child care center, mm. and whatever we are practicing day-to-day -day activities and all we teach them. So, so you're sort of training the parents as well and the coaches as well? Coaches, uh, okay. training the master coaches mm. and then training the Basically, it's a business management solution, the other aspect. Whoever is managing the child care centers, they are not totally professional people. Mm. Uh, I have noticed in Pakistan that plenty of the daycare centers are open and uh, the professional people are not running it. Right, so we right. are on an agenda that we it's just teach for the sake, of business. For the sake mm. of business. And they're not looking after the child the way they're supposed to be looking after in the daycare centers. Right. And what is actually, we have no policies for daycare centers in Pakistan. Mm. And uh, basically I'm trying to work on the daycare policies, child care policies, so mm. that there should be a certain kind of layout where the they can go, register daycare centers first, right, right. Uh, uh, manage daycare centers according to the policy, so that the parents is very much uh, in a peace of mind mm. that w they are leaving their children, right. it's, uh, it's registered and they are answerable. Those mm. child care daycare centers are answerable for those. Okay, okay and Ms. Shafi, thank you for sort of explaining that. But uh, my question for all three of you is a little different. Okay. Mr. Gohar, Tabir and Sumaya, did, do you think did we, as a generation, we failed to be good parents mm -hmm. that we need child care centers in this year, I mean in, in this time? Actually, Sumaya, let's start with you. I'm actually very glad that you asked this question. I don't think it's about failing um, as parents. I think it's just that people are a lot more aware. Okay. And um, as a blogger, I get a lot of messages from uh, young girls who are now moms um, who've been following me, and they keep asking me things about, uh, you know, what food to give to their mm -hmm. child or um, how to nurse their babies. You know, we don't have a lot of experts in Pakistan. We don't have lactation consultants. True, true. Um, uh, People don't have access to good pediatricians, okay. um, but it's the age of Google. Hmm. It's the age. It's a di digital age where people want to read up on things and they want to know everything. They want to be the Informed. perfect parent, hmm. and they look at you know uh, their social media and they look at moms who have it all and who are doing it all and who have perfect babies and right, right. and they aspire to be that. Hmm. So I think it's just that people want to do better than their parents probably did, and yeah. they want to make sure that they're they giving the everything. Hmm. To their uh, children in the best capacity okay. that they have. Uh, I have a slightly different uh, perspective on this one. Okay. The point is that we are living in a digital world, right? The social values we had coming from generations, uh, forefathers, we have lost it and we are a disconnect nation. We are a disconnect generation. We are Generation X. Thank you for saying that. Generation X is the generation in which we are all the time on the Facebook and disconnected with the fact book. Right, 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 makes sense. We talk to strangers, thousands of strangers mm. on WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, but we don't talk to the person sitting next, next to us. Next to us, right. Right? 
We don't want to talk to strangers because it's against our values, mm. but we share our intimate pictures on the Facebook, mm. right? Mm. So what it has created all over the world, and it is according to the latest Actually. research, that 55% of the people go through anxiety just because of social media yes. uploads. The moment <coughs> you have a coffee or you have a burger, you take a picture, you upload it. Right. So Do you know the feeling you get when you get so many likes? <laughs> oh, yes. yes. Out of this world. <laughs> but, but mind you, the feeling of the person or friend of yours, a brother or sister who is sitting at home sulking, he doesn't or she doesn't have a car exactly. to go somewhere. Mm. Money is not the point. The point is accessibility to go to that place where That's you right. are and especially when you go to holidays and in Europe or mm. Paris, Milan and all those beautiful places you go to and you take your pictures. There are hardly anyone who gives you like, but at the same time inside, they are full of envy. They mm. have lots yeah. of issues with that. So what it creates is it creates a lot of stress in people. A and conflict society as well. Yes, right? and then what happens is that that conflict creates stress in individuals. Mm. Those mm. individuals are bound in relationships. Oh, so yeah. whether it's a husband, wife relationship, whether it's a friend relationship, mm -hmm. it's mother-daughter relationship, whatever it happens, it <coughs> comes into a management issue. Okay. How to manage the stress. Exactly, yeah. In Pakistan, there are more than 50 million people who are mm -hmm. suffering from mental illness and stress-related issues. Wow. Yeah. This wow. ratio is more or less the same like America, Canada. Okay. Yeah. But in America and Canada and Europe, where I have worked before all my life, they have counseling centers in the universities, okay. colleges. Okay. So a lot of stress goes off there and then during the college days. Then they have psychologists, life coaches everywhere and people go to and hmm. book their slots. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. In Pakistan, it's a taboo. Right. You yeah. don't go to a psychologist, you don't go to a life coach unless it's very, very necessary and at that time it's already lost. The All battle right. is lost. Okay, that makes sense. I'll come back to this point, but let's see what Tabi has to say. Did we fail as a generation? Um, we didn't, I guess. No, I don't think that we failed as a generation because um, I wouldn't want to blame my parents because being a mom myself, I know how, uh, you know, how parents put everything they have into the child development. But I think is that, as um, Sir Gohar said, that uh, you know the media is playing an important role in our lives. And being young parents, I've I've felt that you know there's like a constant pressure on us, constant pressure, a pressure of being like societal pressure. Not just the societal pressure, like constant pressure of being perfect all the mm -hmm. time. Like Sumaya said as well, like, you know, we have this um, made up um, life on social media, you can say, because you just show what you want to show. Okay. And people don't see the other side of the story on social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need childcare <coughs> coaching, but first, I think we need coaching for us, like for moms, Pure for, for, for to fathers. Put first? Yes, mm -hmm. because I think as. Um, our generation, what we've been through with parents that didn't have a good education. Well, I think we have that coaching. I, I'll, I'll come back to that. But ah, Shafi over yes. here wants to add on. Yeah. As she said that uh, uh, you've been okay. keeping all of these things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so uh, I was keeping this. Right, just uh, uh, bringing it out. Okay. Uh, she said that uh, uh, we are we are a failure as a generation. She, uh, as you said, she didn't. Yeah. Okay. But what I believe is... I uh, said we're not we, failing as a generation. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what, actually, what I believe is that it's not about failing. It's about how we are taking it. Mm -hmm. Their generation was different. Their times were different. Times different Our absolutely. times are different. Mm -hmm. We, as a parent know that we should know that how we need to brought up our child mm -hmm. there are gadgets there are there are bad there are good things in the life but how we teach them how we brought them up how we need to tackle the situation need to tell them what is important what is right what is wrong importance you need to create mm -hmm. being a parent and parenting is the major issue which we are failing right. it's not about the generation gap or anything even the dadi says something you know what happens the mother is so much busy if she's a drop in mother she's oh, okay forget about it i don't have that much time to act on what you are trying mm -hmm. to convey mm -hmm. me you can do by yourself if you like to yeah, well, that's what the bee does with my mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, okay this, this, this is where I wanted to interject. Now, yeah. Gorsab, this is something which I want you to answer. And then Shafi, I yeah, want you yeah, to answer, sure. then everybody can follow yeah. up. So I think that we are, a, a, we are a generation full of ignorance. 
and it's because of the fact that just because I had to prepare for the show. So yesterday I watched a clip which was from somewhere in 1980s. Mm. Anwar Maksud Saab and Fatma Suraya Bajia Saab are having a dialogue. Okay. Now, Anwar Maksud Saab has asked the same question, do you think that we're failing as a generation? They then were talking about it. Mm. And the answer was so brilliant. Just let me know whether it was correct or not. Mm. Now, she said that, you know, there were days when we used to live with our grandparents. And, you know, when we used to live with our grandparents, our grandparents actually used to teach their kids, mm. God forbid if your son or daughter is going to have cancer, what to do in life? God forbid if you're going mm. to have an accident, what to do in life? Okay. God forbid if you do not have a job, how to hold on strong? I think these values are missing. What we have, what we're focusing on right now is that our bacha should be speaking English very well and should you know, I go to the first? And, you know, you should be wearing the best clothes and right, the best right. bags and the best water bottles. Mm. So, do you agree to this? And if you do, why do you think we have moved to nuclear families? Okay. Uh, in this testing times of digital age, I'm coming back to and referring back to digital yeah. age. It's <coughs> put, it has put a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on parents, siblings, children, everyone it goes through. Because the reason is that we have a lot of information, okay. but we lack knowledge. Okay. Mm. Right? Mm. There's yeah. a difference, right? We push a button and it's all there. Anything. In old days, we used to go to libraries, borrow the books for two weeks, and return those books. Mm. Now everything is just on the button, right? Click of a button. It's not about not knowing it, it's about application. Okay. Knowing is one thing doing is another. So we know it, but we're not applying it. Yes. Okay. We know so many things which our forefathers didn't know about it. Their lives were simple, right? And they didn't know what uh, depression is, what postpartum depression is, mm. all that they didn't go through because they were not into that kind of serious issues. Now, what the problem is that we have a lot of information. Information is a kind of a weapon. If you don't use it, what do you do with it, right? Mm. Is it for the benefit of people? Is it just for an ornamental showpiece or what? Mm. Okay. Lots of people have knowledge of doing something they don't share, and lots of people have information they don't translate into knowledge. I would come back yeah. So this. this is the point where we have to see mm. whether the people we interact with, are they doing something about it? For example, uh, relationship or life coaching there are lots of people in market they are talking about life coaching there are lots of people who are talking about relationships unless you have a plan a strategy attached to the talk because as the chinese proverb is talk does not cook rice okay right yeah. okay actually um, speak louder than <laughs> right so unless you have a strategy unless you have a plan attached to it mm. that talk won't help and that's where the motivational speakers fail they motivate people a lot and you are feeling excited badaldo pakistan and the next day you are at the same mm, rut right. the point is unless you have a plan unless you have a strategy you have worked out what needs to be done by when Mm. Because dream is a point where you think about it, but goal it has a timeline, a Got specific it. timeline to it. So it's all right. about doing it as per timeline. All right. Okay, Ms. Shafi. Uh, I will stick to the parenting again because uh, uh, we need to. Uh, the mothers comes to me for the consultancy, and what happens is at the very early age, initially when the child born. Mm. Uh, they are very happy about it, mm. they play with it, they do everything with it. Once the child starts speaking, they don't look after what child is speaking, mm. they don't direct the child uh, what to say, and they actually not direct it in a happy manner, or they don't direct it in a specific manner which is supposed to be done. Right. Sometimes they are yelling, sometimes they are shouting. They treat child as per their behavior. Hmm. Parents okay. treat child as per their behavior, as per their anxiety, as per their depression. But what, what happens ultimately is the child is learning every single thing. And later when the child is three years old and the child is four years old, he's depicting whatever you have done with him hmm. yeah. or her. And then later on that anxiety carry on, then four years old, five years old, six years old, seven years old. And then he starts showing you behaviors. Then he starts showing you. If you are over on the phone 24 7 and you're telling your child Please not to do it. Please, what kind of behavior? Please talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to okay. talk about. I'm talking about basically.
basically the Jobian parents because they have the depression, they have the anxiety because they leave their children. And what they believe, they sometimes blame themselves. And while blaming themselves, they are taking that exertion out on their children, mm. okay. ultimately. Yeah, right. and that behavior is supposed to be get managed, and uh, they need to learn parenting. Okay. And end of the day, what happens is that, uh, as Mr. Gohar said, that we are in the world of gadgets. Mm. I agree that we are in the world of gadget, but can we not focus how to parent, how to tackle child, what time to use, how mm. much to use, what kind of restrictions we put? But because we don't have that much time, what we do it literally is when the child is back from school. I mean, why do we say we don't have that much? That much time. I, I tell mean, you, there were 24 hours. Early, I tell you. Have even I, I, yeah. I tell you, I tell you why we don't have time that much because being parent, I believe I have seen so many parents, they are on social media too. And they are, if the, if the parents are on social media 24 seven, sometimes they take escape. What they do is, okay, if the child is on the tab, that's okay. I'm doing, or mm -hmm. the mother is cooking or the best solution is the tab. The best solution is uh, the oh, oh, okay, do you now, agree? Um, and now, now what, what's wrong over here is that, God forbid, you know, if you go back in time, you know, they were television, and parents were on television most of the time. You know, uh, you know just, I, I still remember that, you know, when it was dinner time, I think everybody used to sit together, TVs turned on, parents were watching their television. But so they, maybe, they don't have after now, now downloads. The time, they, time please, is divided. I, I will, I will okay. stop you yeah. here, please. Uh, there were no downloads that time. Yeah. If, if the program, if the program, okay, yeah. Shazad, Shazad. If, if, if the program is supposed to be on air by 8 o'clock, right. 8 to 9's transmission, they know that it's coming on 8 mm. to 9 and even they hardly used to repeat yeah. the telecast. And they make sure, okay, the dinner is ready, everybody's very punctual, and then they watch that one hour, and even that one hour was the united time. Yeah. The family is sitting together. I, I, I would like to say something here sure. because I'm a blogger, so yeah. I essentially <laughs> represent, you know, digital media. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's. Um, there are a couple of things that I want to say here, starting off with the point that you made that, you know, the grandparents used to teach so much to their children. And they used to teach us life. Yeah, and maybe parents aren't doing that anymore. I personally feel that times have changed where now we have a lot more security. Uh, you know, people are doing better. We have double income households. So uh, the concerns that people used to have earlier, maybe they don't have those no. anymore. Mm -hmm. no, but but you're at the same on time, of a very large segment of the society. Absolutely. That's what I was yeah. going to say. Right? That's what I was going to say. My second point that what you were saying probably uh, holds true for just a small population yeah. of yeah. the country. Mm -hmm. The masses are still living exactly. in, you know, joint families and big families. They're probably still going through those struggles and they're still uh, talking about those issues. Mm -hmm. Secondly, even if you're talking about this small population, I think uh, the challenges are different now. Okay. So people are talking about how to deal with uh, social media, for yeah, example, yeah. or how to create a balance in uh, using digital, incorporating right. digital yeah. into your lives. Right. Um, what I feel is that people, when they talk about stress, they talk about postpartum depression, there's a lot of uh, emphasis uh, that's played on working mothers or yeah. uh, parents who are both working mm. and not on stay-at-home moms. Okay. Yeah. So although I wouldn't say I'm a completely stay-at-home mom because mm. I, I run a I mom support group as well mm. for which I have to go out of, out of the house or I'm working at home um, and I blog, which is also, by the way, full-time right. work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but I, I do feel that the stress still plays out even yeah. if you're at home. There are a lot of things that are going uh, in your mind where you're thinking, am I doing this right? And you think that on a constant basis, mm -hmm. is my child fed enough? Is my child getting enough sleep? Yeah. Absolutely um, yeah. Am I teaching the right things to my children? Yeah. So it's not, I wouldn't blame social media for it. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally feel that as a parent, even if you want to get on social media, most often than not, you don't even get time. You okay. know that your child needs you, and when that happens, just like then you just like watching videos on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but Tabi, you've been wanting to add something for a very long time. Yes, um, as Sagohar said that, um, you know, our parents and that generation didn't have depression and anxiety. What I want to add is that they had depression, they had anxiety, they had postpartum depression as well, but they didn't have the time to acknowledge that they had these things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We as a generation are not failing I would like to say that we as a generation are winning at this thing because we are acknowledging these okay. and we are accepting our flaws that we have depression and we have anxiety and, and we want to, you know, better. we want to get better. And the need for childcare coaching and the need for the life coaching begins from the point where you start to accept that we have this thing. Yeah. Okay. And I think we or as parents... Yes, I think in today's age, everybody needs help. And the need for childcare coaching 
uh, I think starts where you realize that you have depression and you have anxiety and you need someone else's help to bring up your child because exactly. if you have depression and anxiety and you're not getting help then you cannot you bring your children to yeah. that and, and, and you know I, I'm going to second that too as well that I'm sorry that I'll have to give an example from the West but you know while the mothers or the parents the, both are actually supposed to visit the doctor regularly as mm. well yeah so eventually when the times close for the delivery so what they do is that there is there's a, there is a concept of midwives over there yeah midwives. they're going to come in they're going to teach the new mothers that this is how you change the diaper this is how you're going to yeah. feed and a lot of other things yeah. which definitely help but i think culturally we are different yeah. because culturally what happens is, or you know you had a baby or you'll be staying at your mother's place for more than 40 days so That's you know, true, I think right? this is this is one way where we communicate in a very different manner because things are very different; they look different. But other than that, I'm very sorry, Tabir. When did you realize that you actually were suffering from uh, postpartum depression, and then what did you do about it? Because I want all the mothers to know that <coughs> you know, this is how you feel. Yeah. Then. And and I know for a fact that a lot of them can relate to you right now. Uh, I actually started having depression while I was pregnant, okay. though it was like a planned pregnancy. But even then depression always hits you when you're pregnant because you start thinking about you know how am I going to cope up with this because I'm too young I was 22 when I had my baby and you know that social media played an important role in you know developing depression in me because all of my friends were going to university and you know going out with their friends and having fun though I wasn't seeing the other side of the story but all I saw on Facebook and social media was there you know snapchat well, about you know fun. going out yeah. and partying and you know that's when it hit me because if I wouldn't have been seeing all those stories and snapchat and insta about my age group having fun and all mm -hmm. that and me being pregnant and home I wouldn't have developed depression in the first place okay. yeah. but after I had my baby because you know I was always I've done uh, my bachelor's in psychology and I've always wanted to you know um, pursue that yes pursue that and do my master's in it and I've um, I don't think you know once you have a baby you get the time to because you know we hear this a lot you know you can do your uh, you can complete your studies after you get married but you, what you don't know is that you don't get time mm -hmm. after you're married because since you're living in like a joint family system where mm -hmm. you have like responsibilities even if you're not living in a joint family you have responsibilities there come child so you know after you have a baby the depression mm -hmm. starts hitting you the anxiety starts hitting you like am i going to be a good mom like mm -hmm. am i going to be better than what my mom brought me up to mm -hmm. am i going to you know how am i going to be able to feed her and all that right, since right. our parents like my mother in law she supported like for like first 4 months i didn't give bath to my baby because my mother in law was helping me with her mm -hmm. she would give a bath i was too scared to you know hold yeah. her up she was so and Great since baby. and baby. since i had like um i had like a very rough period after my delivery because I got infection and I couldn't get off the bed and I had the drains coming out of my belly and everything. So I think that's where the joint family helps you out. My brother-in-laws, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, they have been like giving me this emotional support and you know helping out with the baby. And it helped you? It helped me because I think if I was living alone with my baby, I wouldn't have done it. So I let me move on to Gorsab over here. Now Gorsab, this is a newly developed relationship. Mm. And it's not as new because, you know, yeah. it takes nine months and then, you know, the women do get hormonal too as well. At times they cannot probably think through things too as well and it's hard to communicate. So, you know, if your relationship is in shambles just like that, what do you do? Actually, this is very sad. Uh, uh, when a woman goes through pregnancy, in the later months of pregnancy, she is immobile. She has a breathing difficulty, yeah. she has a walking difficulty, she cannot sit in a position, can't travel in a car for a longer dura durations and drives. So she is more or less confined to lesser routine when she was used to. Mm. And the husband, he has to acknowledge that this is something yeah. what I have to be uh, aware of this particular disability or discomfort whereas he takes it normally that it is just part of the routine and women are used to it nobody is used Thank to it because nobody that. nobody do not understand yeah, yeah. yeah. and nobody it's has practiced it actually nobody has gone through it unless you become <coughs> pregnant right that is the part when she is going through lots of hormonal changes and lots of uh, chemistry brain chemistry is going through a lot of changes okay. All the serotonin levels and all the oxytoxins and all those adrenalines and those four happy um, type of chemical reactions are on the lowest ebb and that's yeah. why she's getting so depressed all the time. <coughs> now people don't understand the difference between baby blues and postpartum depression, right? Now once she goes through all that process, it is more or less baby blues, but when she 
delivers a child mm -hmm. and it takes about another a week or two weeks after that the postpartum uh, depression really hits mm. and that is the time when she goes into a serious serious uh, behavioral uh, issues and at times it gets so worse that the person who's going through postpartum depression is seriously thinking of either killing herself or the baby yeah. Wow. It is that bad. It yeah. has very, very serious overtones, suicidal yeah, tendencies, and the husband is oblivious of that fact. Right. And most of the time, because I come across lots of young couples who come to my pl uh, place in, uh, where I have a setup in Lahore. And, and you charge for that, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's a private consultancy. Uh, we do uh, relationship coaching. We do uh, life coaching. Hmm. But we give free coaching to the people who are financially challenged. I'm oh, sorry to bring this. <laughs> okay, I'll leave. Let, let me finish yeah, yeah, and sure. then we, I'll take up you on your question. Husband is thinking that she's faking. 90% of the cases I come across, those young couples in their late 20s, they come to me and they have very, very serious relationship issues okay. and they are going for a divorce. Mm. Would you believe it within two years of marriage? Some Sometimes it's less than two so years. So what do you say to them then? It has to have a mindset which they don't have in the first place. Mm -hmm. Both. Uh, I won't blame husband for all of it. It is not only husband, it is the wife as well. So it's both. But husbands need to understand that she is fighting a battle. She is going through a lot of physical discomfort. She has mental worries, issues. And then the stress comes from in-laws. And it goes without saying, Hame beta chahiye. we need a son. We need, a, mm, for example, we need Usually a wali, wali ahead. We, we, we need a, a hire to the throne. You are living in a rented house and you need a hire to the throne? <laughs> yeah. What kind of a bullshit is this? I give them a lo lot of yeah. it because yeah. I do the straight talking. I don't mince my words. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, because you are putting that girl into a lot of stress and you are expecting her to deliver something which your generation has not been able to or our family we don't have a child for the last three generations. So is yeah. she supposed to, exactly. as she under some contract to deliver a son? These are the stresses, these are the yeah. pressures which you put on the uh, expecting <coughs> mothers and then she goes really bad into postpartum depression right. and right. which needs professional care and guidance. Okay. No gap shop talk. Okay. After okay. Sumaya, Shafi will come back okay. to you. Um, after I just want to add something here. I think even if the husbands are very supportive, uh, which I've heard from many girls and in my case as well, my husband's been very supportive. I think it's just I think the women fact just say it when they're out of their houses <laughs> and when they're inside the houses, you're the worst thing I've ever done. Before. Okay, I'm sorry. And yeah. sometimes they're not even able to say that too. Yeah. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, what I feel is it's the fact that your life as a mother has changed and your husband's probably has not as much. Even if it has, at least he has that choice where he can go and take a nap whenever he wants to but at I any time it. of the day. Yeah. As a mom, you can't. I know that. And after every two hours, you know. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Exactly. And and it's that fact that you suffer, a, a, there's a sense of loss, yeah. you know, where you feel like what you, had, you are. what you had in your life for, I don't know, 23, 25, 26, 30 years is mm. suddenly gone. Yeah. And now you have this new life that nobody prepared you for. And <coughs> I think while childcare coaching is, yes, important, but the emphasis has been on raising the right child, the good children, or the mm. raising them the right way. Do you want to have an example for that? I have, I have. You have. Now if you've got an example for rearing and nurturing the best child. Okay. But, what I want that? To, but what I want to get to here is that I think we need to provide more support to women or yeah, to moms. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, in a different Perfect. capacity. And I think the reason why I started the support group was primarily because it was these girls who had suddenly become mothers and were going through these different levels of stress, some of them going through postpartum depression, asking me to just have a space where they can feel like if their lives have changed, others have as well, and somehow get support through people who are going through the same challenges. Okay, yeah. I, I, I want right to come back. It's the last yeah. minute. Yeah. Okay, I want to come back. Uh, with that. Uh, you do it online, right? No, no, I have like face-to-face uh, face mm -hmm. sessions. Face-to-face yes. sessions. Okay, what we do is, uh, 
I want to give a, a solution. Okay. We need to talk about Very solutions. Quickly. You've got, you, you've got 30 seconds. A quick solution if we have. <laughs> yeah. So I can come back and then I say. Yeah, 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 because, yeah, I because, because I want but to talk about it. But utilize the 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about it because what we are practicing in, in our center is that we invite parents, we invite uh, mothers, daughters, everyone in our sessions and we give them uh, the energy, the boost and the pregnant ladies we call in our center and then we educate them about mm -hmm. parenting and we go home to home in our area. We have team who go home to home and then they bring those mothers out, bring Sasma out and then everyone out and then we talk about it, Dadi, Nani, everyone, or Sabke session. We do everybody's yeah. session in there. And it helps. It helps, and then they change their mind. We try to change their mind what parenting is, and we talk about parenting 24-7. Okay, well, okay because that's what the Pakistani that. community is, ladies and gentlemen. You're not, like, we're not individualistic community, right? Yeah. There, there's always Sasu, so there's always Nande mm. and Davis. And, but that is great because they help you in bringing your child up with exactly. different values as well. But thank you so much, all of you, for being here. As usual, we're short in time. I hate that we are because there's a long <laughs> uh, discussion of these things that we need to Indeed. do, maybe later. Uh, but uh, do you have anything to say? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, there's only one thing, ladies and gentlemen, and I believe that the way I was actually raised, and I think that that was a perfect... Well, I think people around me can comment on that too as well. But other than that, I think that it gave <laughs> me those values, it gave me those morals, and it gave me that patience to, you know... Well, because at times in life, you're not actually getting what you're striving hard for. That's the time when you can have a relapse or depression or anxiety. Mm -hmm. So that patience will take you long and contentment. And uh, contentment comes in by, you know, so nobody is actually going to come up to me and mm -hmm. ask me whether which food you're carrying because it doesn't matter to them. And it matters to me. If it matters to me, right. you know, I would have bought the new phone, but it, it works still fine. So I'm going to go by with it. And one day, you know, when it's going to be not working, not functional, I might think of buying a new phone. Yeah. So I think that's what we need in life. We need to be strong on our values and morals and life's easy. Well, that's true. I totally do agree with that. And ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that all of you are actually taking something away from this because these are professionals, mothers over here who actually took time. Take Professional mothers, ladies no, and gentlemen. No, professionals <laughs> and mothers, I said. Yeah. So who actually took time out to educate all of you about this. So if there's something that you need to add to our conversation, write to us on our Facebook page. Which, which is, is with the name of World This Morning. On Twitter. World This Morning with RG. Uh, Daily Motion on YouTube. World This Morning, World This Morning. And Rupert is going to be Five at. Five past 11 p.m. Until the next time, one, two, three, good, good morning. morning.